I'm Kenneth Rosenthal. I'm presenting the creative photograph presentation, photography presentation. The, the first uh, photos we'll look at are of the sky and cloud photos that I took and edited it. This is one that uh, the sun's really shining. I made it uh, look that way using that editing apps. And I like the white rays and uh, yellow foreground. Next. This is what I call uh, <coughs> cotton candy clouds. And uh, it, it reminds me of cotton candy, the white. Uh, with a purple pink um, aspect to it. And uh, I took this uh, outside. Um, I forgot exactly where, but uh, I like photographing the sky and uh, the clouds. Next. This is a cloud that I captured. Uh, it looks like the state of Michigan. I uh, added purple and I also have a bright blue one and it reminds me of the state of Michigan. And uh, this one is a pastel jet stream. You can, the, the next one is um, blue. It, it looks more like the sky, but I, uh, on this one, I uh, like the color um, schemes of uh, what what came out of it. The pastel, pink, green, greenish blue, teal, and blue with the jet stream coming up from the, from the ground. Next. This is the blue one that you can see the jet stream more clearly, but uh, it, it, uh, I like the, uh, the neutral color of it all being alone pretty much with the clouds, as you can see the little white to the photo. Next. This is, uh, trees with purple sky or purple clouds, blue sky, and, uh, the trees uh, are nice to look at with the purple and the and the sky with the purple clouds with white uh, accents to the clouds. Next, sunset with the red background. I like the. Uh, You know, I just thought about having the sun setting and the rays of the light from the sun and the warmth of the red um, co color, reddish pink color to the background. Next. This, this is uh, one that uh, was submitted and accepted to the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan's two-year traveling art show, and it got accepted. And uh, it's yellow and green clouds and trees. And uh, I like the composition of the yellow and green and the trees in white. And uh, it's a, I think it's a good photo. Next. Signature sky background. I uh, 
I sometimes use this in uh, backgrounds of uh, of portraits, self portraits, like my. Uh, I'm going to turn my camera off real quick so you can see see a see a. Uh, it's uh, I use it with portrait backgrounds, and uh, I think it looks. Uh, you know, just uh, the clouds allow it to look like a he pretty heavenly and uh, really uh, stands out. Next. This is a horse-drawn carriage original photo um, from Greenfield Village um, that I took with the, uh, with the, you know, just the horse horse drawn carriage riding on the road and uh, reminds me of old times. And the next one, which is, you can switch, is the horse drawn carriage with added drama. I uh, liked the filter that I used to create the drama of the, with the white outlines and uh, in, in the, uh, sky in the background with the trees and it gives it somewhat of a nostalgia look. Next. This is the Greenfield Village Church in Greenfield Village and uh, I, I liked the uh, the way I uh, photographed the uh, from the the distance, it was a good uh, distance to shoot, and uh, got pretty much all of it. And then X has added drama to it, which you can next. This is added drama with the white. It's from a filter on Snapseed, and uh, that I use often to. Uh, accent the photos and change them to uh, to a color. Next, this is a double exposure of me in the Guardian building. I uh, use the Snapseed double exposure app or editing, editing uh, filter to uh, if you're familiar with downtown Detroit, the Guardian building has an insignia that's on my head. And uh, I had to pass cell colors to it. And uh, it turned out, I think, great. Next. Double exposure of, of a sh the shadow of me in grass and the Labor Legacy Monument, downtown Detroit and uh, see the uh, circular monument. And uh, I just wanted to add something to it and uh, the double exposure worked. It, it's a real nice piece of art. Next. This is a double exposure of Labor Legacy Monument and Joe Lewis Fist. I uh, I put the fist, it just turned out this way that uh, with the double exposure app, um, that the fist was inside the Labor Legacy um, statue. And uh, I really like this one. And uh, you see the transcending, Labor Legacy transcending or uh, signage. Um, of the monument. Next. This is a double exposure of the financial district and uh, a lighter lighting up the, uh, and you see the uh, people mover and uh, is in red and uh, changed the color and made it a double exposure. And uh, I really like that one. Next, this is a portrait of uh, a, a fellow photographer and uh, 
that's in the arts program at creative expression program at uh, Kadima, uh, which is where I uh, get these uh, awesome ideas to uh, take photographs and uh, it was done in the hand house in the theater where uh, it, it plays with the lighting also. And uh, I, I like that one. Next. This is uh, Riello Roses at the Etzel Ford Estate um, in the Rose Garden. I have one of these that I added drama to also, but uh, the yellow flower roses, uh, I like the color of the picture with the green and the roses really coming out of my, out at you. I also cropped the images to, uh, to seem closer than they are. Thanks. Next. This is, uh, ducks at a local farm and I like how the shadows of the ducks um, portray the they just uh, uh, I like the photo a lot because the ducks are white and uh, they stand out against the brown um, ground next these next four images are four faces of me with uh, different colors and uh, it's a digital negative that the uh, professor gave or didn't give to me but uh, took of the double double or digital negative um, and I had the colors to this this is the original one of the negative and then the next is uh, is yellow yellow neon and i like the how the colors uh jump out at you with the face of me and uh then the next one next one's a different color um next this is it in green and uh, I liked how the green light jumps at all at you, the face with the glasses and the, and just the whole pictures. I uh, like how they uh, somewhat are uh, retro or uh, neon type colors that uh, they really uh, accent the photo. Next. This is the four faces of me in red, and I like the neutral type color of the red. It's somewhat uh, different in, than the other ones. And that's, I think that's it. I appreciate you all having me present my photography and uh, and if we have time, I can answer questions. Thanks, Kenneth. So uh, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, unmute and ask or put them in the chat and uh, we can read them out to Kenneth. But Kenneth, I, I think it's really interesting um, when you have the same image, the four faces, and you just have the different color for the face, how it evokes a different kind of uh, emotional response just based off the color. That's very cool. I also um, wanted to ask you too, it, it seems like in, in all of your landscape work, um, you have a little bit of trees that are always in there that give you kind of a context and a contrast, which I think is awesome. But when you use the filters, sort of like there's a highlight of color, you know, whether it's white or yellow or whatever, kind of along the tree line. Is that is that an effect that happens just by using the filter or is that something that you add somehow? Well, sometimes I'll add different colors to the uh, one color and uh, come out with the image. And other times uh, it just comes out like that with a filter, um, depending on the image. And uh, I think it uh, generates the image automatically from my photo um, that I take. 
and uh, and it, I believe it, they they offer pleasing uh, looks and uh, presentation. Yeah, it really makes a strong contrast with that sort of outline of the trees above it. You know, there's that right. little border area. It's awesome. Anybody else have Thank questions you. for Kenneth? I do. Uh, there were two of the clouds and there were those light spikes. How did they get in there? Well, the jet stream, are you talking about the jet stream ones? Yeah. The white one with the white line. That's yeah. actually, uh, if you see jets fly, they make a pattern in the sky. Oh. And uh, that was uh, from the uh, jet that was traveling through the sky The uh, hey. after the turbulence that it creates the, uh, the sky turns different, turns to white. I don't know anything about photography. Uh, the first pictures that you took of the clouds, are those taken in black and white and then you add the color? Or are you just changing? You come from the a color, color camera, um, a color, a digital camera that uh, the only ones that were black and white were the four of me um, with the neon. You have to make a negative out of black and white, and uh, the rest were its original colors. But then I changed the color to uh, accent the photos. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions? I, I was going to ask Kenneth if. Um... If you have opportunities to show your work, sell your work anywhere, like, um, you know, is, I'm wondering if we can be helpful somehow in, in getting your work out to the public more. I would like that, but uh, right now I'm not working with anyone except for Kadima, and uh, they have uh, a couple exhibits that, uh, that are coming up. The... My mine was chosen for the Community Mental Health Associations of Michigan, that one yellow and green one, and uh, traveling art show. But besides that, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, since the pandemic started is when I started taking the classes that they offer or activities that they offer, and uh, I'm pretty good at it, I think. Yeah, it's great. I wanted to interject something right now. I see it's, it's uh, almost 20 after three. And we, we're guessing how much time each of you is going to take. So we, at, we put three people in this sec section. And I'm worried that we might only be able to do two. So... Michael, would you be willing if we hang over to next time, if if that happens? Yes, that's fine. Okay. I just want to do mine. It's deferred. Deferred, deferred presentation after the second. Well, Cassie, I don't know. Would you mind uh, going next time and, and letting Michael uh, do his today? I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not Hold on a minute. I got I got to get to see her. Hold on. Let me see where Cassie is. Hold on. Give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute. Lying, but she said it's okay. <laughs> she put her thumbs up. <laughs> we can give her a we can give her a, a virtual hug. Yes. Standing. <laughs> Anytime. I'm fine. We can do it next time. Well, okay. we, we'll see what how much time we have left. <laughs> let's do Let's do Michael next, and then we'll see how much time we have. Maybe we'll yeah, get okay. she can do a she can do a short time. story yeah. this time and a long one next time. Right. <laughs> that means I'm. What about that means we're gonna. Yeah, do you'll mine. be next, Michael. We're gonna get you okay. set up right now. Okay. I'm gonna pause this and let's see if you can hear. I hear it. Me. 
Okay. We can hear you. Yep. We can hear you. Okay. Here's what Michael Lagavatel's 2D hand drawn animation desk looks like. Let's have a look at the 2D traditional hand drawn animation process at Greenhouse Animation Studios, shall we, folks? Here, Michael Lagavatel single handedly did the key animation on the sheets of pre-punch 12-3 animation paper using graphite drawing pencils and kneaded erasers. Later, Michael checks his key post drawings to see if they need in-betweens wrapped on paper or to digital if the key post drawings are to digitally cleaned up on the Adobe Character Animator CC on Michael's MacBook Pro using his Wacom and Tools tablet. For the record, this set of key post drawings featuring Michael's cartoony human blonde teenage boy character, Mike Patterson, will be in between traditionally using pencil and paper. And speaking of in betweens, here's a final stack of animation drawings done in pencil on sheets of 12 field letters as animation paper featuring Michael's cartoony human 10 year old girl character Amanda Mc Amanda I mean Amanda who is actually Michelle's 10 year old sister in betweens it all Here, Michael takes in the completed Amanda animation drawings and puts together a pencil test for a smartphone device called an Apple iPhone. The scanning had to be done using notes on Michael's iPhone. The pencil test filming had to be done on Michael's iPhone using a traditional animation app called Digisoft Flippad. Let's have a look at the completed Amanda pencil test that was animated by Michael Gavateo and see for ourselves. One thing left behind from this pencil test is actually the sound effects. Coming up, it's the same pencil test Michael's already put together featuring Amanda's 10 year old younger sister Amanda McQuader, but with added sound effects. Uh, Not bad, Michael. However, Michael has completed the image twins for his Mike Patterson pencil test and he's brought, brought it to life on his iPhone via Digisoft flip pad. Let's take a look at the completed Mike Patterson Pounce test animated by Michael Lagava Teo, even with sound effects. And I do mean pencil test. It's a good start. This is a good start even for classic comedy humor. A few weeks later, Michael took in the scanned drawings of his Mike Patterson animation and digitally inked and painted it in his iPad using Adobe Photoshop Mix. Then he would bring in the final composite frames to life in his iPhone in Digital Flip Pad. 
Here's the final color composition of Mike Patterson's cartoony prideful, animated, digitally colored and composited by Michael Agapoteo, complete with silly cartoony sound effects. And here we go. Not bad, Michael, even in color. And I do mean digital color. Almost there. It's almost reaching to the stop. It's almost there at the end. Thanks, Mom. What you just seen are some animation cycles of Bansy, animated by Michael Garvatel back in summer 2018. Here's a 30 second short film that Michael did for Don Bluth University called Animators at Work. Yep, glad. I hope you enjoy my uh, animation presentation that I did for the Henry Ford Museum. Yep, glad you appreciate it. Pretty, pretty good. It deserves two thumbs way up for my fandom and my fans, my family, my relatives, everyone. This makes it okay. I'm glad you like it. Glad you enjoyed everything, every, everything every moment of it, which makes it okay. I'm glad you appreciate it all. Question, what, yes? did, Henry, what did Henry Ford Museum do with it? They, did uh, they, did, they want me to do a presentation. They, uh, they asked me to do a presentation for them by Zoom meeting for a Zoom. By, they asked me to do a Henry Ford Museum, asked me to do a presentation for them via Zoom live stream back in January of 2022. And I went ahead and took, I worked very hard on it by, by, and by the deadline and I got it done right on schedule. And the animation presentation I did, and I just did for the Henry Ford Museum had me working on a presentation reel and I got it done in time and I uploaded the Dropbox and I attended the live stream presentation on Henry Ford Museum and I got it. So you said you started it in January of 2022? The life the Henry Ford presentation I did for the Henry Ford Museum, yes. And this, what you just saw was the one I did for the Henry Ford Museum back in January 2022, which is pretty cool. Yes. It didn't take very long. You did a job that was really fast. A job well done. And then uh, luckily, luckily, the student film I did for Dominic University uh, was done in 2019. I had to get it done before my trip to Disneyland Resort in California to honor my birthday back in September of 2019. I had to, get, I had to take my timing. Well, at least get it done before the wait for my to get it done before a couple of days before my birthday. 
It's better oh. to carefully get it done before my trip to Disneyland. Um, th this is Ani. Uh, Miss Marguerite is wondering how long, Michael, it took you to make that video. My presentation reel took me up all took me about all month of December. Month of December. This past December. Yeah. It, wow. Yeah, it, it was. It took time. Yeah. Thank you. I'm. Um. This is Ani. I'm surprised it only took you one month. That was a lot of work. <laughs> yep. Indeed, it did. Yep. Indeed, it was a hard, a lot of work, which is a good thing too. Totally. Too. Um, and, and I, I use hand. As for the animation supplies, I use traditional hand drawn animation supplies, courtesy of Lightfoot Animation Limited and Canson on supply products, such as pre punched animation paper, black green pencils, which came out of Amazon, color erased pencils, which use erasable color pencils I usually get off Amazon. And I also use some leftover animation supplies from Color to Color, and I also got, and which I attend. I'm also intending. I'm also intending to get some more animation supplies from Lightfoot because it's still open. And it's still open because Lightfoot's still around, which makes it okay because you still have Lightfoot at, and it would still have Lightfoot because it's still in business. Michael, when did you start doing animation? I started doing animation for li for living in in two thousand in start around two thousand seven when I first got my when I first got my Tentacle Starter Kit for my birthday, it was pretty cool. The Tentacle Starter Kit I got came out of Whitefoot, which is pretty cool. And I first got my Caulfield Pro Pro Grade Double Pegged Animation Disc Cartoon Color in the all this season of 2012. I still have it. Well, attached to my Alan Gordon Fax Richardson Animation Disc, and uh, that I got in 2013. Michael, I, I'm wondering, with, with just with the pratfall, like the girl characters pratfall, how many images do you have to draw just to get that little segment? And how long does it take you to draw all of them? It took me a week to get us. It took me approximately a week up, up from a week to more a week and a few days to get one second of animation done, like 24 drawings per second. Wow. Yeah, and that luckily there's more than more than twenty four frames in each in that in, the, in scenes like those, like up to uh, like almost seventy drawings in those shots. What what's an in between? An in between is an animation drawing, like animation thing, and hand drawn animation and two D digital animation. You it's pretty. I learned it is like you taking the key drawings, you in between them, like you apply in betweens, and you so, get more floor fluid animation in the timing. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was I was wondering. So you have like your key drawings that get you the basic movement, but then you need the in betweens to make it more fluid. Yes, just like the Disney, just like the classic Disney animation, even in the nineties. And then how, how do you line up the pictures so that they're all, you know, within the same frame? You know what I mean? If they like you have to usually, take a picture of each one of these, right? I usually have them animated on ones a lot while a couple, a few shots had to be animated on twos. Well, most of it will definitely be animated on ones via, via Disney. Disney films for the 90s. I have to pay tribute. I always do a tribute to the timing of the animated Disney films of the 90s. Because I have to give my animation timing a 90s resonance Disney vibes and the animation fluid timing. Mm -hmm. To be have the animation composited and animated on ones. In a few few shots on twos, according to the expo, according to the animation X sheets asked for. I timed the X sheets. I always time my X sheets. I got it from Lightfoot. I would, used to order off cartoon color, but since they died out of fashion, I currently get my animation X sheets and my animation paper and cells 
and other supply animation suppliers from like from the you know, different a brand new kind of animation supply shop that's currently in business as of the mid 2000s called Lightfoot, which is headquartered in Temecula, California. And the only animation vinyl acrylic paint I get from a different nowadays, which is based in, which is is actually based is actually Westminster, California based art supply warehouse. Because they sell a different kind of cell vinyl paint, they sell called Tone Tones. Mm. Is is a similar brand to cell vinyl, but called Tone Tones. So, do you sometimes paint glass cells, and sometimes you do the 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 uh, coloring like on a Waco tablet or something like that? I use the. I actually use. I actually do uh, cells in a. I actually do do uh, limited edition cells and cell productions of animation drawings for a living. It's apart from doing a. Uh, animation work to have the animation immediately uh digitally my, but luckily most of my shorts will have to be uh digitally inked and painted in the computer big time just like the 90s restaurant Disney films like aladdin lion king hercules beauty and the beast and rescue is down under and every other 90s disney film up to until the mid 2000s and like I said, I only use uh cell vinyl paint, tone tones paint, acrylic paint, and all and all cells and all that for making limited edition cells and uh reproduction cells for living. Yeah, so you that just includes, sell those as like artwork, right? My it do it, but luckily they have green mouse characters on them for a living because I yeah, I always do that. I always have but luckily they do have my own some of my no production cells and Original homemade cells on on my on the wall in my room for display. Right. They're kind of like the uh, Disneyland art corner cells. They're kind of like the Disneyland art corner cells. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like the Disneyland art corner cells, but handcrafted using a uh, rather twelve year animation cells I picked up from Cartoon Color, but new ones ready to order off Lightfoot someday, or. These nine by twelve inch acetate cells called Duolar that I picked that I usually pick up from Amazon to cut costs sometime. Mm. And I use a speedball acrylic. I use for the black India ink. I use speedball, or I use speedball, or I use speedball or any other. But it was speedball. Mm -hmm. I use for the India ink. I use a bottle of speed. I use an ink bottle of Speedball India ink for a living. Yeah. For the ink, oh, pan ink in the out one. It's rather with a, a quote called dip pen or a skinny paintbrush. Well, but, it's amazing. But it's easier amazing to handle work, in hand ink and using skinny paintbrush, just in case. And I am in the animatronic shows, the DIY animatronic shows. About working on a DIY animatronic fancy character. So it's similar to a, a free stage animatronic Chuck E. Cheese character, but I'm planning to get save up for more more materials to make him to like the steel metal for the Mac, some more cylinders to give the ply his sixteen <coughs> big one six for its pneumatic as a pneumatic movements, and program blue software for it to program him in a Windows laptop. I need to save up for someday, and we'll have that all set up for him someday. Along with an air, I'm going to get out a small air compressor in the garage for him. We'll hook it up to the character valve, but we need an air regulator, water filter, and oil, oil trap system someday. That's to do airbrushing? And we also need a cosmetics. We also need to, we also need to do plush mask. It's a cost effective alternative to latex mask because making a latex mask, I believe, might, is cost prohibited. As because it costs too much. Mm -hmm. So does silicone mask. And I figured out a cost effective way to cut costs on latex mask or silicone mask, which is the plush mask to give the Banshee Tronics characters a plush looking attire, plush mm -hmm. looking feel on the head to toe. Nice. Make them look like uh, animatronic stuffed animals, but they're <laughs> Banshee Tronics characters right. with plush masks. 
Very cool. Well, it's amazing work, Michael. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. No problem. And I also, I'm also into making walk around MasterCards from scratch, like the ones at Chuck E. Cheese and Disney theme parks too. Nice. All right. Um, this is Ani. There is a second video I have downloaded that's almost four minutes. Do we have time to watch that one too, or do we need to move? Move. Luckily, there is time. If there is, I think, if you there, download I think it, we can watch that. Okay, just making sure. I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, then I will press play and just let me know if you can't hear my audio. I'll, I think I'll hear. I can hear it. You can be worried because I hear it. It's to start with an, an oval shape for his, for his head and connect the line for the, the corner of its head. Then the, then the uh, dare I say it, the upper cross to locate his nose. You will have uh, the curved, curved construction for his cheeks. That way you will have the uh, around his cheeks. It will have the construct his mask for his face. It will have the oval for his nose and the uh, curved lines for his face. I mean, snout. My mistake, snout. Then the uh, curved, more curved lines or arcs for his dimples that connect the smile with another curved shape. Then what I like to do is add some outlines of more arcs, curved arcs, to kind of construct his eyebrows. And then what I will do next is to apply the uh, another half a, a, short, a circle. And what I will do is do this and apply another elongated circle for his other ear. Another long a circle for his inner ear. And with that said, you locate his ears. And that's how you draw his ears according to this. And then you have a curved arcs here and here for his head. You draw a three tufts here, and another three tufts here to give his cheeks a little furry features. <laughs> and a buck to smile to give him a moth like features. And uh, You construct the eye construction. And what I like to do yeah. is give him Eric Goldberg by him with the eyes and color in the pupils with my the graphite side. And then I would then color in his pupils and his nose to give him a give him texture. Apply your signature and Give it a date of you of when the drawing is done. And with that said, that's how you draw a fancy. Glad you glad you enjoyed the animation academy drawing tutorial video on how to draw a fancy. Pretty glad. No, oh, that was great. <laughs> so next next time we're going to meet April twenty third. Yep. And Robert Drain, right here, and Cassie are going to present, and maybe Nusha. We'll see. No.
Okay. And then I'll be con connecting with the rest of you <clears throat> to make dates to present. And next time, um, <clears throat> a young lady by the name of Shacha Kalai will be coming okay. to talk about how to get over blocks in creativity. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll be an interesting talk as well. So we look forward to seeing you all on April 23rd. All right. Have a good spring. <laughs> we hope. Hopefully it'll be even warmer by next month. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lonesome Shirt. Wonderful work.